I spent the last weekend gaining this nice red sunburn that I have, which is the only time my eyebrows actually show up uh, during the year, uh, driving around in my car collecting signatures in Danbury. And out of all the people that I spoke to, registered Democrats, one person liked Lieberman. Other people chewed my ear off for hours about how we have to make a change, how this is great, and they're pushing forward. So I thought as a totally non-biased, but yet I have my button on, uh, Danbury resident who is new to Danbury politics, to let you know that the constituents that I have met in Danbury getting petitions signed are backing Ned Lamont. And I'm not sure who and all is going to the convention on the 19th and the 20th, but to keep in the back of your mind that the people of Danbury that I have met are not happy with Joseph Lieberman. Not just because of the war. The war is one of the last things they're concerned about. It's the health care and the way that the, the state has been run for the last number of years. A lot of uh, the campaigning that uh, has been done is talking from, from um, Lieberman. It goes back four or five years. There's really not much new that he's saying. So I think as our representatives going to the state, Please listen to somebody who has worked on his sunburn and walked the streets for the last uh, three and a half days and who will be walking the streets next week and, and the following week. Uh, but this is the way the people of Danbury are speaking to me. And there's a lot of other things I want to get into. And I have petitions here, uh, which I hope uh, everyone here will be willing to sign to help uh, get a primary. And please, please, by your endorsement of Ned, let's give the let's give the people of Connecticut and Danbury a choice in August to be able to speak their mind in the voting booth. At the very worst scenario, because there's a lot of people out there saying, "Well, Joe Lieberman's an incumbent; he's guaranteed to get in." Let's make him work for it. Let's, let's, he's so comfortable with his lead and how he, how popular he thinks he is. He's not working for us. So let him know that the people out there are not happy. Thank you for your time. <laughs>
for me and my husband to, um, to live. If we pay for our groceries, I lose my uh, health insurance. Ken Ducker said, go and buy your groceries. She said, if I buy my groceries, I lose my health insurance. Ken said, no, I'm here to help you. This is what I do each and every day in Hartford is to help people like you in situations like this. I got this for you. I got this. Go buy your groceries. When we got the polls this past November at the election, they both came out. They saw Ken. The husband shook his hand. The wife hugged him and said, thank you so much for helping us in this situation. That is the type of person that we need in Hartford to represent us. It's not about just knocking on all the doors, but it's about what do you do after you stop knocking on those doors? How are you gonna help the people that needs to be helped? And Ken Gucker does that each and every day. He goes out and he helps people. Doesn't matter what the situation is, he helps people. And I can say that confidently because I'm with him when he does it. Those two situations was situations where I brought him into when these people didn't know where to go. But Ken Gupter was there for them. And Mr. Chairman, it is my honor, it is my privilege to nominate for a third term my great friend, like a brother, Kenneth Gupter for the 138th District. Seconding from folks who see who live in the 138. Second. I rise to uh, second King Gucker's nomination. King Gucker and I could not be further apart. <laughs> He's not my brother, uh, but we share the same tent, this Democratic tent of ours. This tent is large enough to accommodate King Gucker and myself. And that says a lot about our values. The value that can be seen in, this, in our tent can be seen in three big buckets as far as I'm concerned. A person who works hard for our party, a person who works hard for our community, and a person who works hard for our people. As a representative, King has met those three goals that I have. I noticed that Ken is a hard worker many times over. Not only as he became a representative, but a few years ago, even before he ran, I was running a fundraiser, and when we were cleaning up at the end of that fundraiser, one of the people who were on my committee looked over and said, who's that man stacking them chairs? And I looked around, that's Ken, because he was helping out. He was taking the trash out, he was stacking the tables, he was stacking the chairs, and he was doing it because, not because he had to, because that's who Ken is. Ken has helped individuals, as Dennis said before, he is, has a listening ear, a willing heart, and he's ready to put his hand to whichever will it needs to be. That is his physical hand as well as his political hand. Ken is there to support and to help the party with everything that he has. This has this big tent. This big tent that we have is big enough for Ken Gucker and myself. And so without hesitation, I rise to second uh, Ken Gucker, not only for his hard work, not only for his political will, but most of all, because we couldn't be more differently, but we are in the same tent. So for the 138 tent. be closed. So that our good friend Ken Gucker can continue his work in Hartford. Thank you very much. Second. 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 Um, those from the vote 38, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
you guys have it. Years ago, I got involved with the party and decided to run for 138 because my neighbors asked me to do it. You know, my history in the city of Danbury has always been uh, out there to help somebody in need, you know, like you've heard from Dennis, like you've heard from, from Glenda. And it was our campaign that year was about we have no voice. We have no voice, we have no voice. For years, my neighbors, regardless of party, Democrats, Republicans, and non affiliates, all came out and said, We have no voice. We would like you to be our voice. Would you consider doing this? And as every big decision, I had to thank my girlfriend, Gloria Boyd, down here at the end of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, he me to come here, so I better make this good because otherwise, all of her dating friends are going to say that she missed out on a good night with them. But we decided to give it a shot. And nobody thought we would do it. Nobody in Hartford thought we could do it. Nobody thought, even here locally, they said, you know, this seat's been Republican for 36 years. Good luck. So we got. So we started knocking on doors. And Chloe, maybe what you want to do, wherever she wants. Right Let's hook up with Mr. Perkins here. He has a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> makes, makes that uh, door knocking a little bit easier, especially when the driveways are three, 400 feet long. But um, well, we started going out. And we spent a lot of time door knocking. Um, and we spent as much time as those people would want at those doors listening to them. Because you can't represent people if you don't know who they are. And whether the conversation is a minute or whether that conversation is an hour, it is still worth going out and talking to those people. And every year when we go out door knocking, I actually like door knocking because I get to learn about the community. I get to hear about the problems that aren't being addressed, that people need help on. I get to learn about issues in certain neighborhoods that Look, you wouldn't have known they were going on if you're not right there. Uh, the 138, uh, thankfully this year, uh, has gotten smaller. So uh, <laughs> we have, we have um, our resources will be more concentrated here in Danbury. We'll be reduced from Danbury. We lost New Fairfield, we lost Richfield, um, which they're not happy about, but people in Danbury are still happy that we're here. Um, but we go out, we knock on the doors, and we talk to people. And that's how we learned about different issues. And a lot of the bills and a lot of the things that I brought forward uh, in Hartford were because of those people at those doors that said, hey, I have this problem, I have this issue. What do I do? How do I go forward? And we go forward and bring it up to Hartford and start talking to resources, start talking to various departments, you know, and we get results. As Dennis is, you know, uh, just talked about uh, his friend with the foreclosure issue. We had a lot of those. COVID was brutal. It's still brutal. Whether it be foreclosures, whether it be unemployment that they couldn't get, whether you couldn't get your car registered because of motor vehicle shut down, and people panicking and not knowing where to go. We were there. The last three years have been nonstop. Sure, Bob and Dave can more than say, maybe that's why Dave's retiring. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but. It was being there, and it's it's the it's the things that I learned very young, growing up in New Fairfield, and I say this all the time, and Gloria says I probably say it too much. I'm an old Eagle Scout. And being an Eagle Scout, part of the 12 points of the Scout of the Law, there's one point that I take to heart every day, and it's the one point which says help other people at all times. And if you can do those things, the rest of it falls into place. Because that's what people want. They need that constituent outreach. They need somebody in Hartford to be able to come down to Danbury and help them because they've got no voice. 
they've got no help here. You know, I hate to say it, our city is still lagging behind. I, I'm getting phone calls on sun, Saturday and Sunday afternoons about issues in Danbury that we shouldn't be having, but nobody does anything about it. The other thing that's been very important, and Bob will probably speak to this later, Things have changed. If you've noticed, we've brought a lot back to Danbury recently. And why? <clears throat> because numbers matter. Having a delegation matters. Hartford, for the longest time, thought Connecticut ended at Waterbury. We had to teach them it goes all the way to New York. As a result, what happened? We got more money for ECS. When the governor was going to flat fund us and say, sorry, I'm going to debt die. The Danbury delegation was able to secure that year an additional $5 million because we talked about how desperately Danbury needs money for education. For years, we've been talking about we need, and I've been saying it for 20 years now, going up in front of the council saying we need at least three more schools. I've been saying that for 20 years. Because we have a delegation now that works together, we're getting more schools. We just voted and passed in our budget the 80% reimbursement for the Career Academy, which now we all have to get out there and make sure we get people to the polls to vote to approve that. Because Danbury needs it. The answer is not some other idea. The answer is education for every kid in the city of Danbury that needs it and has an opportunity for that. All kids. And we need to support our teachers. And we need to support our staff that, that man these schools. They're not being heard. The night that I won, I was the last person to, to know the first time that I ran that I actually won. I was pacing back and forth like an expected mother. Everybody already had parties going on and we're pushing midnight. When the numbers came in that we had actually been victorious, Bob Godfrey goes, give me the phone, I have a phone call. <laughs> Bob beams with Lee and Bob, you've been a wonderful mentor and a friend up in Hartford. Gad, put, showing us how to get the things that need to be done. He is truly the dean of the delegation, not only here, but also in Hartford. His leadership speaks volumes. His experience that he is more than willing to share is very appreciated. Because that's how we've been able to get so quickly from going from a freshman to a COVID situation because we've been living in COVID for three years. It's that kind of friendship, and Bob, I thank you. And Dave, I'm sorry to see you go. I'm sorry to see you go, you know, we were just getting moving, but you're usually down in your office working on energy <laughs> stuff while I'm upstairs a couple floors up doing uh, things like that. Which go, brings me back to my story with Dennis about the foreclosure stuff. When I got up to Hartford and I said, what committees would you like to be on? Well, what's the most thing I've been very passionate about? It's the environment. I'm going to be on the environment. My second choice was I wanted to be in planning and development because how many people have seen me knock on doors to fight against bad development here in Denver? The third was education, but they stuck me on banking. And I said, thank you. What do you think? <laughs> OK. But what I learned on banking while sitting in those committee meetings, listening to public hearings, is beating people like Jeff Getz from the Fair Housing Committee, helping people with foreclosure issues, helping people with stuff that was not in my wheelhouse. And maybe that's part of what this great experiment is, is being put in uncomfortable positions outside the wheelhouse to learn more, to be able to turn around and help people. And as a result, Yes, Dennis's friend, uh, neighbor was saved, but I could say there's a bunch more people that were saved. And you don't hear about that because I don't talk about it. There's some things that should be private. But I also will say this, my constituents feel comfortable enough to be able to come to me with their hat in hand at their lowest point and say, I have nowhere to turn. Some of these people aren't even my constituents. They're outside the district. They're not in the Danbury delegation area. They might be in another town. They said, you know, I was talking to somebody. I really don't know where to go. And we get them there. Because society and, and, and our, our 
town and our cities do better when we're all healthy and we all work together. And we all understand each other. So that's the energy I want to continue. When they say we haven't brought anything back, the last two biennial budgets, how much, Bob? An extra $11 million in ECS money that somebody doesn't understand where it is? For 17 years, the northern end of the second ward has wanted a walking trail. They're finally getting a walking trail for 17 years, the Marjorie Trail. People can't wait. And if anything that has happened, COVID has shown us the importance of things like this. When Dan Bray needed more schools, we brought down people from uh, Hartford to look at when we were first looking at the sum. Though it was an unconventional idea, the Danbury delegation worked together as a team to get that over the line and then did it a second time. When we needed to explain how crowded and congested our schools are, when our local people in City Hall don't want to recognize that fact, our delegation with the leadership of Bob Godfrey brought down the Education Commission, not once but twice to come see what every teacher and every student is dealing with in the city. Because seeing is believing. So I happily accept your nomination. I happily accept um, going forward. We are going to be knocking a lot of doors. We need the entire Danbury delegation to be real. Because again, numbers matter. And when four of us or five of us walk into the speaker's office and bang on that door and say, we need more help, we need more resources for our city, they listen. You know, when some want to point back, well, what happened before us? Well, nothing, because we had what? Two members? It was Bob and David. Before that, it was Bob and, and Joe Zabersen. Before that, it was Bob and Lou Wallace. Numbers matter. So get out there. We're going to need your help. We're going to knock on those doors. Last year, I broke my record of over 4,000 doors by myself. We're going to go even more this time. Because I think I've got like 12,000 voters in my district. We're going to get out there. Dennis is going to need more batteries for that golf cart as well. So thank you very much for everything, folks. And thank you, Gloria, for always being there and being patient. I thought she was going to kill me a few times this year. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 well, we're still here. Thank you very much, all.